Well, howdy. See those mountains over there? That there's Texas. Yes, siree, and the Rio Grande River right down below there. But currently I'm in New Mexico and going into Texas on the other side of El Paso and then back into New Mexico today. But let's go look at some quirky stuff on this part of the road trip. A pretty nice little spot last night on that end of that promontory there overlooking, um, what is that called, Sunlin Park, I think, New Mexico. Uh, but <clears throat> we're going to do a quick drive through El Paso. I'm not going to stop in there. I stopped through there last night. Um, and then head on out east of El Paso and then uh, back up into um, New Mexico a little bit and then uh, do a little bit of can do kind of a little, little weird loop or maybe not a loop but a kind of little angle to get back into a little bit of the corner of uh, New Mexico and if all goes according to plan I think we're going to be on the Pecos River tonight how about that No, this is not the Pecos River. Uh, this is some random dirt road in uh, just north of the Texas border. And I'm running out of light. <laughs> so I've been dawdling along today and uh, well, that's uh, kind of half, uh, half the fun of uh, exploring, right? Just see where these uh, random dirt roads take you. So um, let's see what kind of a spot we find. So let's see where this one maybe goes, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I guess this will be it. Let's find a little spot here. Turn into the wind. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Not too bad. That's looking out towards the east. Just right over the hill there is the uh, Texas border. Sunset and Carlsbad uh, Caverns right over, right over here. And I'm down below this little hill so I got a break from the wind. So we'll uh, continue the journey in the morning. See you then. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> Look what it looks like today. Today. So the uh, wind was really whipping uh, last night, about 30 miles an hour. It still is right now. That's why I'm uh, using the ambulance as a windbreak. But uh, if I get out here, you kind of get a sense of what's going on, right? All right, so let's uh, let's see what kind of adventures we got uh, going today, huh? I think there's a couple. Oops, I think there's a couple things that might be uh, kind of interesting to look at. So let's go and see.
You know, finding <clears throat> all these out of the way little places is actually pretty nice. Um, not only uh, for the solitude itself, which is, is nice, but uh, even just because of um, seeing where places are that most people don't see and also looking at places that uh, <clears throat> You know, 150 years ago was brand new experiences uh, for the uh, settlers almost 200 years ago. And then thinking before that, you know, the uh, Indians that uh, uh, were roaming the land here. So pretty interesting stuff. And uh, the reason this road here is uh, so good is because uh, this is, again, BLM land, and um, a lot of the uh, <clears throat> sections of land, or at least, whoops, oh, <laughs> a lot of the sections of land are leased out for um, oil uh, exploration, mining, things like that. All right, but let's see what we've got on the list today. I think it's going to be kind of interesting and quirky, yes siree. <laughs> well, this is uh, turning out to be a nice bumpy road here. Uh, this is Mobley Ranch Road. And uh, I think it would be better if it was just straight dirt. <laughs> All right, this is a lot better. It's a two track, but it's uh, certainly a lot better. All right, we're here. Where's here, you may ask? I'll show you. That's oh, windy. So look at this, we're out in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? It certainly looks like it. But out here in the middle of nowhere, look what you find. And what's this, you ask? Why, this is nothing but uh, a plaque showing that Project Gnome occurred here. Project Gnome. So what was Project Gnome? Project Gnome was a nuclear experiment that was concocted uh, back in the late 50s, 1958 to be exact. And uh, the idea was to um, put a nuclear bomb underground, oh, about 1,100, 1100 feet down and then 1,100 feet out that way. And it was actually designed for peaceful purposes, not for destruction and death and all that. So the uh, Project Gnome, the uh, objectives were to uh, see if they could generate enough heat underground to be able to produce steam <laughs> that would produce electricity. And then secondly, they were uh, trying to create radioisotopes that they could get and then study scientifically. And then the third thing was, uh, since this was a um, part of Project Plowshare, or Project Vela. The third objective was to be able to see if they could um, try to be able to de de determine nuclear weapons tests that were occurring underground. Because remember, this was all in the, in the uh, Cold War, so we wanted to be able to detect nuclear explosions that the Soviets were doing uh, in their program. Now, like I said, the, the project was designed in 1958, and it was actually going to t occur in 1958. But then the United States and the Soviet Union had a uh, nuclear test ban uh, that started that year, and so the test was put off. And then when the Soviets broke that test ban back in, uh, um, in September of 1961, then uh, the U.S. started back up their nuclear testing. And that's how Project Gnome came to be. Uh, so anyway, the bomb was, I believe, out here somewhere, like I said, 1,100 feet down, and then 1,100 feet out. And the winds, so you can hear me a little bit. 
better. Um, it was a, a three kiloton bomb, and just to give you an example of um, three kilotons, the uh, bomb that exploded over Hiroshima in, in World War II was a 16 kiloton bomb. So anyway, they uh, put the thing down and then a shaft over that way, sealed it up, and then detonated it, and guess what? <laughs> that was supposed to be sealed, but the plug failed and smoke and radioactivity, ra radioactive stuff uh, <laughs> came out, and uh, oopsies. But anyway, it was it was uh, weak enough that it uh, quickly depleted, and there was no problems anywhere. So anyway, uh, after the explosion, they uh, sent down uh, actually they sent down some guys um, to take a look at the uh, dome that was made underground. Uh, the reason that they selected this area was because there's um, there's a big thick salt foundation underneath the ground and they wanted to explode it in salt because if they exploded it in um, in rock it would not create temperatures high enough to be able to see if their experiment worked. Well anyway they got down there and they saw that it didn't really work because even though it did melt some salt it also caused bedrock to come down into the salt dome which then caused the temperatures to fall which then caused the radioisotopes not to do anything and so for all intents and purposes that part of the uh, experiment was a dud. It did uh, provide some other experimental benefits as to being able to detect um, nuclear explosions uh, that were done in other places. But uh, anyway, Project GNOME was the, uh, the first experiment of its type and even though it didn't work it did help uh, to um, develop other peaceful nuclear explosion tests so that uh, not all nuclear explosions are big, bad, terrible things, right? Project Gnome in the southeast corner of New Mexico. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go, I think that away, into Texas. That's right, Texas. Because there's something else that's Nito Cabido that we want to see. <laughs> So let's go. Close the door here. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you ever wondered what a fracking operation looks like, you know, you've heard you've heard it so much in recent years. But um, that's uh, that's a fracking site right there. And if you've forgotten what fracking's all about, they uh, they inject pressurized uh, steam or chemicals into the uh, ground, which then um, pressurizes the uh, oil underneath the ground, and they can uh, ex get the uh, get the oil out. Next stop, well, we're in Monahan's, Texas. Let's see what Monahan, Texas has to offer here. <laughs> 